everyone, Jana here at the 4-H office, and today's fun 4-H activity is how to knit scarves. Now, I never really learned how to knit. My grandma tried teaching me, but I'm left-handed, so sitting across from her and trying to do it backwards just didn't quite click with me. Um, but I have found a neat, fun way off the Instructables website on how to knit. I actually made this nice handy dandy scarf. Some of you are gonna be like, oh, it's John Deere colors. No, it's actually Green Bay Packer colors. So get creative. Think about what you could make for your scarf. So our materials for making our scarves today and our knitting machine, which is reusable, are some handy dandy craft sticks, either the smaller ones or the bigger ones. They kind of look like tongue depressors. You're going to need a pair of skizzers, some duct tape, some sort of tube, some sort of cardboard, plastic, something or other that the yarn as you're knitting your scarf can drop through the bottom. So you can use either a paper towel tube, a toilet paper tube, um, an empty roll of duct tape. I actually have a solo cup one that I made this scarf on with smaller sticks. Um, or I cut apart a oatmeal container and I have taped my sticks to that. So to get started, um, if you decide to use the oatmeal container or the solo cup, you will need to have an adult to cut the bottom off um, for you with an X-Acto knife, a box cut, or something like that. Um, if you're home alone and you want to try this project, what I would recommend is either a toilet paper tube, paper towel tube, or an empty roll of duct tape. And what I'm going to show you now is how to set it up. So we're going to roll our duct tape out. Get all the ends, try not to rip it. It's much easier if you do this. I'm actually going to lay the duct tape out. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make your knitting machine with bigger craft sticks because the bigger ones are actually easier to knit with, to pull your yarn up and over with than the smaller ones. It's doable, but you might get a blister. So what we're going to do is just place our duct tape flat on the table. We're going to take our sticks. I like to put mine halfway through um, or the middle of the stick on the duct tape. What you want is about an inch, maybe just over an inch, sticking up over the edge of whatever you're knitting with. If you have a lot of sticks sticking up over, you're going to have to pull your yarn up and over a lot farther, um, which means you might actually miss a stitch in this knitting machine. So we're just going to put these out. We're going to space them equidistant equidistant, which means that we have the same amount of space in between each stick so that our stitches are even. So we're just going to kind of place them. If you want nice tight stitches, you're going to place your sticks closer together. Um, if you want wider, looser stitches for a different look to your scarf, just space them out. And these are totally changeable, so if you make one scarf and you decide you don't like the size or spacing on your stitches, undo the duct tape pull your sticks off and reposition. So I'm going to start rolling up my roll to figure out how many more sticks I need. And remember to keep them equidistant. You can actually count on the duct tape. It has little ribs on it from the way the tape's made. You can count if you want to be precise or you can get out your ruler and measure. So we're just going to kind of roll those around Pull out some more duct tape. The sticks pull off real easily. When I was setting up my oatmeal container knitting machine, I had to pull that off quite a bit to get them all lined up properly. So I'm just going to finish rolling, rip my duct tape, or cut it with your scissors. Put that to the side. And what you have is your knitting machine. I have all of my little knitting posts equidistant. They're approximately an inch. All right, some of them coin aren't as even as others, but you catch my drift. So to get started, I actually use three different um, balls of yarn for this one to get the yellow, green, and white colors. Don't recommend starting out with that. Just start with one, keep it simple to begin with. So I'm actually going to use um, some of this gray thread. I actually like to throw the balls of yarn on the floor. Take the end of my yarn, put it so it hangs out the bottom, a good three to five inches out the bottom of my knitting machine. I'm just going to wrap it once and just go right around and wrap 
my yarn once. When I get back to the beginning where my, my tail is coming down and I started, wrap it again so that you have two. Okay, what we're going to do is you have to be quite ambidextrous to do this. We're going to hold both of our ends. Where we started, we're going to take this bottom loop of yarn and pull it up over our top loop. We're going to go around and do that for every single post in our knitting machine. Just pulling the bottom up over the top. So we'll do this a few times. I'm gonna pull my top to make sure, or my tail to make sure it's tight. Once you have everything pulled up and over, go right around your sticks again. Pull up and over, right around your circle, up and over. The big chunky yarn, especially if you're a clover bud or a younger 4 h -er, much easier to use than our littler yarns. Um, you can use baby size yarn. Um, if you wanted to make a little person scarf. Any type of yarn will work. I've used the big fuzzier yarn. I've used the finer yarn. Um, anything will work as long as you can grab it. If you are using finer yarn, I have had success with a crochet hook if my fingers get sore to pull up and over. So again, just bottom stitch, bottom thread, piece of yarn, up and over, making sure that I'm pushing everything down so my top one doesn't come off with my bottom one. If it does, real easy to fix. So I'll show you that real quick. We'll just go around once again. So if I didn't catch, catch the top one, if that came off, or if my strings got unwound, all I would have to do is pull this, unwind everything, pull the stitch that you just created, pull it right out. It just pulls right out. Put your bot, your previous stitch back up on the post and then rewind everything, just twisting around once. As you're going through and knitting, if you lose count, it's okay. I've lost count several times, especially if I pick this project up and set it down. You're just going to continue going around, pulling the bottom one up over the top one, creating a scarf. How long you want the scarf is totally up to you or whoever you're making it for. You're going to continue. Whoop, see, I just lost this one, so I'm going to unwind everything. Pull this stitch back over my post. Go back and rewind everything. It's just one wind right around, guys. And then just up and over, up and over. Now, some of your sticks, your craft sticks, they might have some sharp edges. Um, they might catch the yarn. You can sand those down a little bit or just peel them, um, peel the rough part off. It takes approximately, well, it takes me approximately an hour per scarf, um, depending on how fine my yarn is and how long I need it to be. So you're just going to go around and around and around to make your scarf. Your scarf is actually going to start dropping down through your machine, um, which is nice because then it kind of doesn't get tangled up. You can see how even your stitches are if your tension's right, which means how tight you're holding your yarn. You can kind of gauge the length. Now, if you use multiple balls of yarn in different, different, um, size yarns, you're going to make a really thick, warm scarf. We'll just get this going just a little bit more, um, and I will show you how to take care of the ends. So I'm going to knit a little bit, and I'll be back with you to show you how to finish it off. Okay, I've knitted a bit of my scarf so I can show you how to finish the edges, but I just remembered I forgot to show you how to get your yarn started off your um, ball or skein of yarn. Some of your yarn, like this one, is just simply loosely wrapped around the outside. You're just going to find that end and just unwrap it as you use it. Some of your other yarns actually feed out of the center and there will be an end that starts pulling out. If you get a knot, you may have the wrong end. Also, if you have a knot, it just may be the way it was packed into the 
um, skein once you once they made it at the factory. So all you have to do is just have some patience, get the knot undone if you can't. That's why we have scissors. Um, cut that and just pull the end out. Now, if you are using multiple colors, multiple balls of yarn to make something um, colorful like this scarf, please make sure that you have enough of each color to make the length that you're going to need. Now, the scarves that we're making actually are kind of tube form. Um, they're, they're open in the center. So to finish the ends, what I like to do is take my end and I just weave it through um, the first stitches and I actually um, make it a little bit stronger. I keep that end from unraveling, that first stitch from coming undone. And you're just going to just weave it right in and then discreetly make a small knot um, to tie it off. Now you can pull it tighter if you want your ends to be more um, closed. This one here I did not tie off. I left kind of um, an open tube. But you're just going to go around and weave and then do your little knot. I like to make sure when I do weave the ends in that I have all of the loops, especially um, at the end of our scarf when we're done knitting because we are just going to pop our last stitch off, leaving this tail a little bit longer and feeding it through and tying it off so that we don't unravel. And if your knots, if you, when you tie your knots, if you have a little bit extra string at the end of that knot, then just cut the end of it off, throw it in the garbage. Now. Great easy presents um, for Christmas, for birthdays, any holiday coming up. If you guys have some fundraisers coming up or want a fundraiser for your 4-H club, great opportunity. If you guys need some yarn, please contact the 4-H office. We have a lot of yarn donated from Joanne Fabrics that we'd like to get to you guys. If you have any questions, please contact the 4-H office. Find us on Facebook and our YouTube channel, both under Shenango County 4-H. Have a great day.